so much fucked up shit to get into. Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey here with Jean-Benet Delcalo. Hello. Hey, how are you? Jacob Furman Matera. Hey, hey. Jeff Simmons. Wow, man. We are just talking about superhero stuff. <laughs> we, we weren't, actually. We were talking about uh, picking our own <laughs> nicknames. Did you guys ever do that? No. I'm so embarrassed to say mine. I, I've been calling myself Rain Train for years, and it's kind of stuck. You made it up? Somebody didn't call you that first? No. Right. I just heard. I uh, like that though. I heard Little Wayne refer to himself as the Wayne Train, so I just started calling myself the Rain Train in tweets, and some people started starting calling me it. It works. Yeah. What do you call yourself? In fourth grade, I picked. Everybody was picking their own nicknames. Yeah. And I picked Jagged. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, dude. Some some of my boys still <laughs> still call me Jagged Delcalo. <laughs> wow, man! Yeah, it's it's incredibly embarrassing, and I wish I didn't say it at the beginning of the episode. I like it. You're you're changing your mind because I'm so embarrassed. I like it a lot. You don't. I do. You don't. Shut Dude. up. You don't, Jake. You don't like it either. I like it, jagged. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Now we're gonna have t-shirts with that on it. God, <laughs> fuck me. Rain Train's so fucking cool. Hit us with a jagged in the chat <laughs> if you're feeling his nickname. Ooh, oh, the God, the luck yeah. that this is not a live episode. Yeah, cut yourself God with an damn. uneven piece of glass right now if you're feeling jagged. <laughs> Jake, what about you? What nicknames have you given yourself oh, man. that you could say on air? I'd like to... <laughs> I mean, it's not going to be emb- as yeah, embarrassing as that. Piece of shit. No, oh. um, I think uh, early on, I, th- I, th- I thought I thought of Furminator. But I mean, like everyone goes to that. So well, no, I didn't know until yeah, uh, Shermanator from American Pie. Really? Then yeah. there was the Berminator from Little Giants. Wow. So everybody knew your middle name to begin with. Yeah, like when when they'd find out, that's what people would start saying. Yeah. Okay. That's good though. Yeah. Yeah, but you didn't make it up yourself. No, I like to. Think Even if I you did, it would have been cool. It, but yeah. yeah, I didn't. Anybody ever say Asa La Pizza Baby? <laughs> Me every day into a mirror, Mike. <laughs> I hope we get to do a bad boy tonight, John. You know how I feel. Me and myself personally, as a person to do dabble in the dark arts, I do hope we get to do another bad boy. <laughs> what if I changed my uh, my flip to, I would talk about Entourage. Would you want me to win then? I do want to see that at some point. You still haven't finished it? I think the correct no. season four, four was, aren't you? Uh, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, dude. It takes me forever to finish anything and to get around to anything. Um, so I don't know when it's going to happen for me to finish Entourage. I'll find it. I'll find the, the time to make it happen one day. I'll do it over this holiday break. I'll What's tell you that. What's stopping you from doing it this week, Mike? Nothing. I'd, you got 50 right. episodes left. You're right. I could do that. They're like 25 minutes long. Personally, I have never hit skip intro, <laughs> but if you hit skip intro yeah. on every episode, you'll save yourself 50 minutes on the dot. I like the song, but I will hit skip intro to expedite the process. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to do that. When you see me save next week. Save yourself 50 minutes. When you see me next week, Jagged, I'm going to talk entourage with you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for everything. <laughs> Are we ready? I think so. All right. Oh, dear God. Here we go. And now, like I said, I think... Uh, I don't know if the Boeing repairman came. I think he did. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, All good. Right. Let's see. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Dude, he, fucking than picked, he, picked it, he picked it up good. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I guess if I win, we'll talk about the Impractical Jokers because that's the game we play here. Here it is. Didn't even flip that wasn't all. even a flip. We all challenge on that one. But I did hit myself in the nuts with it, so you guys can be happy <laughs> about that. Please do Please, I said my name is Jagged. I deserve some luck. <laughs> Fuck you, God. Uh, you fucking piece of shit. Well, next best thing, John. Black serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> he also happened to be a black mechanic from South Central Los Angeles. 
And Jake, I do agree that a very cool name for his business would have been Boys Under the Hood. <laughs> that would have been great. That's a great business name. You should be the John be Taffer mechanic. of people's <laughs> yeah, businesses. I've that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, their names. Yeah, yeah. you Thank could. You. you could really reel in some some good business for these people. Thank you. I think Boys Under the Hood would do well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just really one of my goals for twenty twenty four is to make more dreams of black mechanics come true. You're a really great man. Can Thank you him. name me three black mechanics, Mike? I will by the end of twenty twenty four, and that's where the problem presents itself, Jake. That's what I'm trying to change. That's good. That's so good of you to it bring is. light to this cause. Mm -hmm. I wish we could change the subject, but <laughs> it's what the fucking episode is about. But this is a bad boy. I had heard his nickname for a while, and I really was not familiar with his game until the past week. But a terrifying individual. Nicknamed something like Jagged, maybe? <laughs> Just a scary man. The Grim Sleeper. Yeesh. That's a good one. And Very you had, had heard that before, but didn't know who it was? Yeah, I, I heard the name before. And... Uh, I didn't bother to look into him until this past week. And I read a little bit about him. I was like, oh, I would like to learn more about him. I read a lot more about him. I watched some things on him. And it really scared the shit out of me because the people that he typically went after were people that did not have friends or family looking after them if they went missing. A number of them were sex workers or became addicted to drugs and they were written off. Like, there was a, uh, fuck, what was the thing the police used to say? It was called, like, fuck. What the it's like a number code for an uh, NHI, no human involved, which means, like, when they when they were found dead, they just assumed, like, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Wow. No human means that there's no killer suspect? Right, yeah. Whoa. Like, there's no, there, it's, not, it's not really worth looking into because this is kind of like hooker natural causes. Jesus. Yikes. Yeah. Is that in the book, or is that just a colloquialism that happened amongst the police forces? I don't know. Yikes. Jake, how do you feel about colloquialisms? I really don't want to say that word right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I won a fucking marathon by getting it out clean. That was very good. I give you a lot. You, you, you're smooth, Jagged. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, there's no edge God, to you. End me now. <laughs> Dude, as you were spitting that out, I was trying to think of a uh, a funny pun for that Puerto Rican eggnog, Coquito, mm -hmm. for colloquial. It didn't Jesus come. Uh, how how many how many fucking uh, of those don't don't end up popping out of your brain? How many of them get trapped inside the machine? We will never find out <laughs> until I'm dead. And then uh, when they pop me open, he is re t e. <laughs> 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 they're gonna come bouncing out like wind up teeth on a teacher's desk I think tomorrow to help with your um, your waking terrors <laughs> if you just write colloquialisms and coquito on a piece of paper uh -huh. and you wake up next to that that should start your brain in a positive motion I like that yeah I did journal for a while and uh, that I don't was fucking care man <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't care about that <laughs> I did journal for a while did you dude <laughs> I skateboarded for a few years. Well, this is kind of like hand skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> the pen was my board. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah, the motherfucker was like, I did journaling for a while. <laughs> serious? Jake was like, oh, really? <laughs> you would have listened to the whole thing if I didn't say anything. Oh, thank you. I, I would have been trapped. We'd still be fucking talking about it. <laughs> Jake, I'll write you a letter about it tomorrow. <laughs> I don't want to waste your time tonight. So the Grim Sleeper was born August 30th, 1952 in beautiful Los Angeles, California. A city that we all know and love. Love that place. I haven't been there since we went. Yeah, same. Do to go back. <clears throat> yep, we'll be back. Always yeah. time. Hopefully for Gavin Newsom's funeral. Oh my God, you hate the governor of a state you don't even go to anymore. That's why I don't, I don't, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm going to journal about it. I know you are. <laughs> Leave me the fuck yeah, out yeah, of why it. Why don't you bring the journal back, Mike? <laughs> um, so the Grim Sleeper, uh, there's not much known about his childhood. Where the story seems to pick up <gasps> is when he joins the army, Jake. Early 70s, he joins the army. He's stationed in Stuttgart, Germany. Does not do well over there. Gets in a little bit of trouble. What do you think he does? Some drugs? No, even worse. Um, Beats up one of his soldier friends? No, he commits a gang rape. Jesus fucking Christ. In Germany? Yeah. My God. He and a couple buddies, they're driving around one night, and uh, they grab a lady who's waiting for a train. They bring her out to a field. They take turns raping her, and he's taking pictures of all of this. She says this lasts like a whole night, and then finally they're taking her back into town the next day. And as a method of self-preservation, she's acting friendly towards them. And she even asked for one of their phone numbers, giving the impression that she's going to call them the next day. And this fucking moron, Lonnie Franklin Jr., the Grim Sleeper, gives her his phone number. So, he's eventually prosecuted for this. This is May 6, 1974. He's arrested. That's an incredible move on her part. Yeah, I mean, just the fucking, the foresight to do something uh-huh. like that. Yep. It's just it's fucking really, astounding. Really good. He's sentenced to three years in prison for the rape. He only serves one year. And get this. In Germany? In Germany. That's Dude, fucking crazy. He's yeah. given a general discharge from the army. I don't know what you have to do to get a dishonorable God discharge in the damn, army. Dude. Convicted gang rapist. And just, wow. Why do you say gang? Because he's... Well, you said it was a group, right? Uh, I did say that. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you say gang? Because you said it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, essentially. <laughs> I didn't call him on it. I didn't call him on it. Um, He goes back to L.A. in 1976. Uh, He's he's a mechanic. He's also uh, a loan shark in his neighborhood, Jake. That's pretty cool. Now, he's a guy, like, his property was pretty pretty neat. The house and the property that he used to own, it's now worth over a half million dollars. Where is is it? It's in South Central L.A., which I think they now call South L.A., Okay, yeah. It's like a rebranding yeah. technique. But it's now a fucking recording studio. Hmm. But pretty neat place. But it's got a massive backyard. And he would fill this backyard with stolen auto parts. And he was the go-to guy. Like, if your car was fucked up, one, he could fix it. But more importantly, he could get you the part you needed for a very cheap price. Nice. And he had random crackheads working for him. Doing odd jobs. Like, some... Just tedious shit, but other times yeah. more nefarious shit, like getting rid of cars that had blood in them. So Damn. you're saying he was a second chance employer. <laughs> That's a good moral standing right there. <laughs> by the mid 80s, Los Angeles, this community is plagued by somebody called the Southside Slayer. But because it's it's an impoverished area and they're in the midst of the crack epidemic and there's such distrust between the police and the community. A lot of these, a lot of these murders that end up happening that are attributed to this Southside Slayer, just you know, kind of go by the wayside. It's most, very Dahmer esque. It is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mostly black women. Um, in a number of cases, drugs and or sex is involved, and they think it's one guy, but later they find out that the murders that were attributed to the Southside Slayer were a um were comprised of, of six different guys who were not connected shit. at all? No. Uh Lonnie oh. Franklin was one of them, but then there were five other guys. And keep in mind too, the fucking Night Stalker was active during this time too. Damn. Yeah. From the summer of eighty four to the summer of eighty five, he was active. Wow. So that's part of like why these murders got lost in the shuffle too, in addition to all the other factors that I just mentioned. Hmm. Crack's hot right then. Um, <laughs> Jake, I, I love, uh, I love so when you sorry. get yourself high on this podcast. <laughs> <clears throat> but to counteract 
these these cases getting left behind. There's a woman named Margaret Prescott who works for something called the Black Coalition Fighting Black Serial Murders. Were you about to say something, Jake? Nope. nope. All right, good. I'm glad you didn't. But she's... She, I thought you were about to come up with a, a more clever name for that. Well, let's see if he has one. His, it's on the tip of his tongue. I, his I lips are sealed and his face is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Spit it out, Jake. He couldn't even repeat the words you said if he had to. <laughs> But this woman, she's fighting the good fight. She's holding rallies outside of police headquarters to help bring attention to what's happening. The Grim Sleeper, he gets married at this time. He marries a lovely woman by the name of Sylvia. They have a son and daughter together. I want you to keep that information, put it somewhere safe for a while because you're going to need it later on. Jake, where are you going to put your information? Right here in this little pouch. John, where's yours going? In his penis. You got it in there now, Jake? It's a pretty full house down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, during this time, women are just being left discarded in alleyways and in dumpsters in South Central Los Angeles. A number of these women are shot in the chest with a small caliber weapon. Now, the Grim Sleeper, he's a garbage man. That makes it, he drives a trash truck. Damn, this guy's got a lot of jobs. He does, man. He drives a trash truck, so that makes it easy for him. For any anybody he wants to dispose of, he can just fucking dump it in his fucking truck and then just put it anywhere he wants throughout the city. And he has access to all these different fucking dumps. So God knows how many women he actually ended up killing. Jesus. Now, in the summer of 86, there's a man. The only, the only male death that is on the record for the Grim Sleeper, this guy named Thomas Steele. And people seem to think that he was someone who did odd jobs for the Grim Sleeper who somehow became aware of what the Grim Sleeper was doing. So he ended up murdered and left in the middle of an intersection. Whoa. Yeah. He fucking murdered him there and left him there? or He just dropped him out. <clears throat> what I think happened, and the reason, what I'm basing this off of is what he did to a victim who ended up living, who he thought was dead. He shot her in his car and then just opened the door and drove off and pushed her out. Man, which seems an insane way to dispose of somebody. Seems reckless. Nowadays, for sure. But if there's nobody around and there's no cameras back then, you know. But if you're doing it in a car that you want to keep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what a fucking. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't seem very bright. He's not. And but if he you committed see him, a lot of fucking murders. He really did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was some inappropriate. Uh, uh, the word is the word jagged. <laughs> jagged. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for getting me out of that one, dude. And to top it off, too, he he drove a very recognizable car. It was uh, he drove an orange car with a white race race stripe. Damn, it might have been a race stripe. I don't know. <laughs> Dukes of Hazard <laughs> dumping out dead bodies. Yeah. Lined them across the hood. <laughs> Just terrible stuff. That was one of my favorite shows. Did you like that? Uh, it was way before my time. Did you like that movie, Jake? I never saw the movie. No. Oh. I wish I got that question. I have seen the movie and I do like it, but now he'll never know that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I did mention that he shot a lady in his car and she survived. And that's uh -huh. the lady I'm going to mention right now. This uh, woman by the name of Anitria Washington in November of 1988... She was walking to a party. He pulled up alongside of her, offered her a ride. She declined. He was persistent. She's like, fine, I'll, I'll go for a fucking ride. If you can give me a drive to this party, I'll do that. He's like, I, could just, I just got to make a few stops first. What was that last It's just never, I mean, I feel like that's the <laughs> piece cliche of thing to say. Yeah. It is. It's, yeah. yeah. Number one, it's like, fuck, dude. Right out of the playbook. I was about to make no, snop, no stops on my way to this party. Yeah. Now making stops all of a sudden. <laughs> and unfortunately, this is what ends up happening to most of these victims. Some of them were sex workers. Some of them, he was dang he would dangle crack for <sighs> sex. They were called strawberries. I'd never heard that term before. When you're trading sex for drugs, it's called strawberries. Was, is that anything, from Daryl Strawberry? Related? Yeah, Daryl Strawberry. I don't know. That's a good. Yeah. That's a good. About the same time. Well, um, yeah. Daryl Strawberry is from that area. And he, and he was yeah. already a famous baseball player. And he was and busted, right? 
crack user. Mm -hmm. Strawberries and the Big Apple. (laughs) That's where he played. And (laughs) he had a big old apple down there. What's the apple? A penis? What is the apple? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never once has an apple been used to describe. No. <laughs> what kind of penis is shaped like an apple? You've never. A, a strawberry penis. Yeah. <laughs> You've never been into an oblong apple? No. And I've looked, no. At, I've looked at every single apple in the grocery store whenever I go in there. Uh, you just got to suck the right one. You'll find it. <laughs> Anitra Washington agrees to go for a ride with him. He makes a few stops, and one of the places that he stops is a place that he calls his uncle's house, which is a few doors down from his actual residence. He says he's got to go there to pick up money. She says that he's in there for about 10 minutes or so. He comes back out. He gets in the car. He's in a bad mood. He starts taking it out on her. She has no idea what the fuck's going on. He's driving, and before she knows it, he shoots her in the chest. She comes back to, and uh, with him saying to her, shut the fuck up or I'll shoot you again. She's like, what is this guy talking about? And at that point, like, she realizes, like, not only has she been shot, but she's also being raped. He has pulled over and he's now raping her and taping, taking pictures. So, again, with the incident in Germany, he was taking Polaroids. And it's happening again now with this woman in South Central L.A. I hope this guy gets a bad death. <coughs> You're gonna be disappointed. Please don't tell me you had a good death. <laughs> All right, I won't tell you that, Jagged. <laughs> You're already or- ornery. But he shoots her, and uh, he thinks she's dying. She's like pleading with him to take her to the hospital, and eventually he just opens the door and he pushes her out as he's still fucking driving. Fortunately, she knows where she's at. And she has a friend that lives close enough by, and she has enough strength to make it to her friend's house. Wow. Yeah, man. This is in the urban sprawl of South Central. It is, yeah. Jesus Christ, man. <clears throat> I never really looked at the um, at the geography of South Central until this week, but I didn't realize how close the airport was mm-hmm. to South Central LA. Really? Ingle- yeah, Inglewood's right there side. in Inglewood. And then Watts on the other, I mean, Watts is in South Central. It's basically like from South of USC down to... USC is South Central, right? I think it's like the beginning of it. Okay. Perhaps. And that's right next to downtown. So it all adds up in my map. Mm -hmm. How's your map doing? It's been better, man. You don't want to know what you'd find in there. (laughs) It's not the kind of answer to my question. I'm the map. I'm the map. (laughs) So this woman, she survives, and she's taking police around. Her memory's hazy once she's well enough to be able to sit in a car again. The police drive her around, and she points out the house that he stopped at. She's like, that's where he lives. The police go there. It's it's an old man that lives there. And they don't know that he only lives three houses down. So at the time, they just think that, like, oh, she's just mistaken in pinpointing this this old man. Yeah. Yeah. But... She's she was at that house. Yeah. The incident scares him to the point where like because it's it's on the paper that this woman survived and he's like, fuck, he chills the fuck out. Now, the reason why they call him the grim sleeper is because he had such a long hibernation period. Okay, close to 14 years go by before he kills again. What? Wow. Yeah. (sighs) Unfortunately, think you'd be done. No, man, it's it's so strange because these guys get so fucking old and they pick right back off up where they left off. Yeah, yeah. how old is he at this point? He's in the almost 2000? So he stopped it when he was 36. 14 years later, he's like 50. 50. Yeah. <coughs> wow. I read a bunch of different accounts that his neighbors gave and some of them were glowing. They said he was a good neighbor. They said he was a fun guy. He liked... He liked the Dodgers. He liked the Lakers. He loved to talk about CSI. But they also said he was inappropriate, especially with women. There was one incident where a family moved in next door, and he pointed a camera into one of the women's women's bedrooms. Whoa. He would, when women would come by to get their cars fixed, he would just turn the subject to sex constantly. 
Jesus Christ. There was one time where a neighbor said she was hanging out at the garage while he fixed her car, pardon me. <laughs> and he asked her to follow him. And he brought her to a different part of the garage and he opened up a cigar box full of women's panties. What are they doing in there? Maybe he's wiping grease off. Yeah. He overflowed his humidor. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of weird accounts. Of I mean, the, taking the video outside of the fucking into the bedroom yeah. is like, that's insane. How is that not addressed immediately? Yeah. Yeah, like cops should be there. Yeah. I also want to add that in 1987, he leaves his garbage man job on disability. So he's got even more time now. And he didn't get another job. He was living off a of disability for the next He just did plus. odd jobs. Like he would he would fence stolen goods. Yeah, did he still have the um junkyard? He did, yeah. Okay. He that was, was the whole time. Yeah. So it wasn't just automotive stuff. He was fucking selling like stolen TVs, mm-hmm. all kinds of shit. Yeah. Fencing. It's the only thing you do. The only fence stolen goods. Yeah. What else have you fenced? Uh my enemies. I with, keep a, with a small, uh, flexible sword. I have a sword right there. For real. What kind of sword? You want to play with it? Is it fencing? It could be for anything. Can I fence with it? Oh, if I poked sake. you with it, would you die? What kind of sword does this pervert have? I don't know. Oh my god, he actually has a sword. It's in bubble wrap, so it's very safe. Either that or he slaughtered a, a package delivery driver. Wow, this is Whoa, incredible. Damn, this is so cool. But yeah, you don't want me poking you with this. I don't, Jagged. You're right. <laughs> I am going to regret saying that for the rest of my life. <laughs> In March of 2002, a woman is found strangled and beaten. Yeah, I don't want to be holding the sword for the rest of this information. Give it to Jake. Put it in Jake's uh, front <laughs> pocket there. You want to hold the sword while he tells us the rest of the no, story? I don't want to hold it. I don't want to hold any sharp <laughs> objects. In 2003, he kills again. And I think there's a couple years that go by where there's no murders attributed to him. So it's 2007. Wow. Yeah. Be he's careful. Just, there's a sword by your arm. He's like running free whole time well he had I, I should mention this so there were two incidents where he was charged with receiving stolen property and he served time for those that was 1993 and 2003 okay. so he was briefly off the streets for for two periods like one was like a fucking year and then the other one was for 270 days okay so in in 93 and 2003 he was off the damn streets jake that's good yeah and in 99, he got 90 days for assault with a deadly weapon. At Woodstock? Why do you think he was there? It was 99. Yeah, bro. Everyone was there. Why didn't you immediately think of Woodstock when you said 1999? Because there were so many things that happened in my life in 1999 that mm. Woodstock was, wasn't even a blip on my radar. You're out of your mind. Woodstock's the greatest thing you've ever known. In hindsight, yeah. Yeah, which is, is, brings us to now. <laughs> True Thank you Jake Did you know that in 2005 If you were charged with a felony in California You had to submit a DNA sample No starting then or that year only Starting then Yeah <laughs> <laughs> Thank God yeah. I waited until 2006 yeah. If you don't act now we're putting it in the vault <laughs> <laughs> um, I did not know that And that's Has that Taken across the country now Is that a I think it's a state by state deal okay. Now because they implemented that they were able to finally get a break in the Grim Sleeper murders. In 2009, Lonnie Franklin's son, Christopher, I told you to put that information away. Yes. Take it out of his pocket and Jake, take it out of your penis. <clears throat> Which one do you want me to have? Uh, you can have both. I prefer the penis. Okay, all right. But if I can have both, that's fine. <laughs> well, now Jake doesn't have the information. <laughs> you can tell him. But in 2005, his son Christopher was brought up on a very serious gun charge, Jake. No laughing matter. It's not like getting caught with a sword. <coughs> Oof. Selling like illegally, like to maybe somebody overseas, you know, like that kind of crime. Do you usually ship guns overseas, Jake? Well, you do a transaction in a warehouse, put it on a shipping boat, the slow boat to China. It's an expression. 
I'm sure you're familiar it? with it, Mike. <laughs> I bet he is. <laughs> Do I look like it? Look into my eyes. Tell me if I know how fast the slow boat goes. That's not what we're wondering. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop us from talking, please. Yes, right. I'm, I'm done. So in 2009, Christopher gets brought up on a gun charge. So they're getting closer. So they know it's not him because he would be too young. Okay. They know it's a relative. So by 2010, they're on to Lonnie Franklin Jr. That's crazy that they can pinpoint a relative. Yeah, pretty neat, man. Yeah. This is very funny. I instantly thought of you guys when I saw this is how they nabbed him. So there was a place called John's Incredible Pizza Company. Are you familiar with this? I'm not. Is no. it a one-off or a chain? Buddy, it's a chain in Nevada and California. Wow. It's like Chuck Whoa. E. Cheese. That's crazy. They have theme rooms with all these uh, giant creatures. And he was in the animatronic <laughs> band when they called him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll never take me alive, boys. <laughs> I'm all right, all right. <laughs> so what had happened was... They had a uh, an undercover operation going on, and Lonnie Franklin was at John's Incredible Pizza Company, and while he was there, they had a cop dress as a busboy and asked him if he wanted them to take his shit away. So he had pizza crust in front of him, like our friend the Gilgo Beach murderer. Wow, the pizza crust. Wow. pizza crust. Always finish your crust. That's, if for no other reason, if you have murders that you have not been caught for. Yeah. Eat your fucking crust. Dude, I love an undercover cop getting in a waiter's uniform and doing that. That's so fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're able to get all this stuff, and then from that, they're connecting him with DNA, and they're able to get a search warrant. And with the search warrant, they find over a 1,000 Polaroids of women that are either sleeping, unconscious, dead, or just terrified. Some are actually posing. It's just a wide array of fucked up pictures. Police re end up releasing. They arrest him. They end up releasing a bunch of the photos. I think they released like 180 because they just don't know who some of these women are. Was that 180 different women? Yes. Oh, my, my God. God. If you, you can look up a lot of these pictures because they still haven't found out who I'm all good. of these women are. Yeah. Yeah, you're better off not because some of them are pretty scary. Yeah. And you can watch an interrogation with him, and they're putting a bunch of these pictures in front of him. They're like, do you recognize any of these people? Were you ever with any of these women? And he's looking at some. He's like, he's like, no, they're but ugly. And at this point, they're just like, Lonnie, we know you fucking did this. They know that he committed more, but they have enough to prosecute him for 10 of the murders and one attempted murder. But he's there's like, potentially dozens more. Dude, there's, there's. There, there's no limit to the amount that, that there could be. And just from the amount of pictures he has, like, not all the women are posing in the pictures. Right. So if they're incapacitated, odds are that he knows what happened to them. Yeah. But they don't have the body to prove it, and they don't have information connecting him. Yeah. But they're able to prosecute him on 10 of the murders and one of the, temp the attempted murders. He's sentenced to death. But in 2019, there was a, a moratorium on the death penalty. In California. I know, man. Looks like we'll have to go in and do the job ourselves. <clears throat> Are we allowed to do that? Are we allowed to sneak into prison and then murder somebody and then hopefully get out? It's worth trying. Yeah. All you got to do is get on death row. And then do we have to be on death row to be uh, accessed in yeah, that guy's cell block? Yeah, it's whole corridor, right? Like, it's all death row inmates. They wouldn't even share the yard at the same time? Probably not. Well, I'd have to um, get passed around like a little gerbil at a Richard Gere concert, <laughs> I guess, in order to win the favor of when some other gentleman. <laughs> when in Gere. <laughs> uh, who could, you know, get the job done for me. Okay. After I get their job done. <laughs> I'd be the first little lady to get pregnant in that jail. <laughs> Would you tell police your nickname? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I imagine by then one of them would be a fan and they'd have a jagged t-shirt on when I got there. <laughs> I want to fuck jagged! 
<laughs> That's what the t-shirts would say. Yeah, I'm going to get those made. You, you with cross eyes, and it just says, I want to fuck Jagged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty sick merch. I want to run jagged ragged. <laughs> Put that on the back. Cool mm-hmm. font, slanted to the side. Yeah, I'm riding jagged ragged. Jake, I'll hold John's hand for this. I have some oh, bad boy. news. John, oh my god, it stinks. March. <laughs> Where was that, Jake? My chocolate pocket. <laughs> what does that mean? Just a, be- a pocket full of Hershey Kisses, unwrapped. The they stuff don't my smell hand like Hershey <laughs> March 28th, 2020, the Grim Sleeper passes away of natural causes at San Quentin. God damn Just it. as COVID started. Yeah, man. A broken heart. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I hope it was painful. No longer with us. I hope he suffered. <laughs> I do, too, yeah. We rode past his, uh, his San Quentin. I could not believe we it was did? that small. Yeah, right? Yeah, I really thought it would be that much bigger. Are we allowed to, uh, to keep holding hands? <laughs> Do you feel all right? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I feel safe. All right, you can let it go. Okay. <laughs> you got okay. jealous. Fast. I wanted to continue to, but... I'll hold this other one. <laughs> that one stinks even worse. <laughs> <laughs> How but many he- inmates do they have? Like only a few thousand, I guess? Less than that, maybe? No, I think it was hundreds, maybe like four something. Are you confusing San Quentin with Alcatraz right now? I am. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't think we... Yeah. <laughs> San Quentin... We drove past San Quentin on the, on the bridge, I think. Alcatraz is like Pirates of the Caribbean for jail. It's just... <laughs> San yeah. Quentin's like a dangerous place, right? Yeah. It's like the most. I don't think San Quentin is is that far from San Francisco. Is no. it Corcoran? I'm trying to tell. I'm screaming that we drove past, past it, it on the way yeah. there. It's like Sacramento. I thought it was like close to Muir Woods. No, it's on the other side. Oh, okay, it's on the uh, Marin County side of that little San Rafael Bay. Um, God, now he's looking at a map and his eyes are crossed. How the fuck? <laughs> how long is this gonna take? <laughs> All right, so it's north of San Francisco. Not far. Wow. Well, yeah. we you learn well, something new every day. I yeah. hope you're not disappointed in Alcatraz so much that you don't want to go there when we visit I would love San to Francisco. go. Yeah. It just surprised me that it wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be. It's a tiny yeah. little island. It's the story of our oh. life. I mean, it was only the bad boys <laughs> of the bad boy. <laughs> Small penis joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yes. Dude, that's got to be horrific. Like, when you get there, you're like, oh, it's not as big as I thought it was going to be. And then you are fucking butt fucked <laughs> with a penis the size of a goddamn eggplant winning competition. I'm letting you sit on this grenade, Mike. <laughs> oh, it'll be the first thing I sat on, Jake. <laughs> But I can't wait to go back to that prison. Uh, Alcatraz. Either one, man. I'll go to either. <laughs> Why would we go back to San Quentin? <laughs> you, don't, you can't fucking go and visit it. But you can yell at them from outside. <laughs> I guess you can, but I can't so imagine it's not frowned yeah. upon. <laughs> There's no way they like that. Hey, num nuts. Hey, <laughs> liver lips. Do you think when Metallica played there, there was people tailgating? Oh wow! I wonder why they let them play there. That's yeah. They nuts. played San Quentin. Yeah, outside or inside? Inside. My lord. Yes. Why they let them do that? Pretty cool. I'm going to any prison. Uh, you you <laughs> must know about the prison outside of Harris. Uh yeah yeah. It's yeah. SCI Chester. Okay. What's SCI stand for? State Correctional Institution. State State Prison. Yeah. Put you in a state pen for that. Hmm? Damn. That's it. It's always uh, kind of alarming to drive by there and just see that it's like fucking mesh fences. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're high as hell and there's a lot of them and there's barbed wire at the top, but it's still like Mm. fucking the fence at the park as a kid had a little kick through hole, you know? Like, true. Yeah. And people really been uh, escaping from prison a lot recently. They really have. You would think it would be way less. Because of uh, technology, you know? Lasers. This motherfucker's got laser brain. 
<laughs> I watched an interview with a criminologist who interviewed one of the toolbox killers who we mentioned last episode, Lawrence Bittaker. She said that while she was interviewing him, the guard who was assigned to guard the cage they were in fell asleep. So I think that explains Dude. why a lot of these things happen. Because I don't think they have enough guards to go around. Then also these guys are just doing double shifts. Yep. And just saying, fuck it, they're not going to get Being out. underpaid. I mean, yeah, it. I can't really fault a guy if it's just one fucking guy in a tower. But Put two guys in the tower. Think of how psychotic. So they can sleep with their backs against each other. <laughs> <laughs> think of how psychotic you have to be to fall asleep in a prison. Dude, I would fall asleep like probably the third day after my training like time. Yeah, Jagged would become jaded very fast. <laughs> yeah, this guy's this guy's sharp. Kind of jagging himself. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This motherfucker serrated. <laughs> it was today opposite month. <laughs> oh, let me get a hold of this sword, baby. <laughs> nah, it's been it a down. while. Yeah. It's been a while. That thing's got a great feel to it. It does, man. Yeah. It's- Somebody got stabbed with a sword uh, right in Philadelphia today. What happened? One of the other. Um, I'm imagining a guy had a sword and stabbed another guy. That's, that's yeah. John. That's usually how it works. I didn't get deep into the citizen. Where was uh, it? Center City? No, 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 no. Close to uh, Upper Darby. Oh, that's where I grew up. <laughs> nice, dude. Take I was like, back, dude. They're, they got swords over there now. You're I welcome. W- I always like to tell you something about myself. <laughs> Thanks. I uh, I knew that. <laughs> I don't like the way he's waving the sword at us. You don't? Well, he's talking to us. I don't mind it. Thank you, John. For some reason, I fucking trust this guy. Thank you. Although that is something you would just say to the guy holding the sword, no matter who was holding it. Yeah, that's true. But I feel it in my heart. Thank you. It wasn't a lie. I felt that way. Another there's something about myself. I felt that way. I used to have a friend who would drive drunk constantly, and he had... It wasn't a, it was a Camaro. I always felt safe with him. No matter how drunk he was, I always and felt like probably we were gonna not. be okay. That thing can get ran over by a Buick, dude. It Those was f- so low to the ground. Fishtailing everywhere, man. <laughs> were you like, Jesus, take the wheel? <laughs> because he was so drunk and he was doing the Macarena while you guys were out partying. Oh. Tried to save that bomb with a Macarena joke. Ah, uh, come on now. <laughs> hey. now. Now you gotta do it, Jake. <laughs> Did that uh, Camaro have T-tops by any chance? It did not. Ah, fuck. You got to get the T-tops off, dude. Mm. Should have just sawed some uh, some holes in the roof. What's the nastiest car you've had? Owned? I don't give a fuck, man. Dodge Shadow. 92 Dodge Shadow. That thing was fucking badass. That's oh. what I do when I see my sleep paralysis demons. I Dodge Shadow at night, baby. <laughs> <laughs> when he holds the sword, the... Fucking dumbass, retarded puns come out smoother. <laughs> do you think? Do you think sleeping naked keeps your sleep paralysis demon away? In Mike's case, the tongue is not mightier than the sword. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> sleeping naked keeps your sleep paralysis demon away. If you're fu- if you take blue chew before that and you hard as hell all night, and yeah. what if you took blue chew? I don't picture a, a, a boo ghost when I think of sleep paralysis demon. What do you think of? Like a, just a shadowy figure that never really reveals itself. <laughs> you see a tongue? You see I, a scary tongue? I don't know about tongues, but he makes that sound. Um, so you just assume there's a tongue back there. Is he shadowy? Yeah. Big shadow tongue. Lording over you. And he goes, yeah. Is it ever you? Is it ever you, like, going, eh, in your sleep, and then you wake up, and you're like, oh, no. No. Nearby. No, I do have demons, but they don't really be bothering me like that. You, you got names for your demons? Dude, I love a guy with a sword in his hand saying, I do have demons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my demons are Tia, Tamara, and Taj. <laughs> <laughs> you can never tell which one is which, man. <laughs> I always feel bad if I call them the wrong name. <laughs> Are you calling Taj, Tia, or Tamara? <laughs> um, whenever we hit an hour, Jeff just <laughs> <laughs> he just takes his shirt off. <laughs> oh, we got a ways to go. I think we can think of a different. Uh, I don't know. I would... Look at that. That's him now. Whoa, he's he... handsome. 
He looks like that Ben one Simmons. Looks kind of weird. Yeah. He looks like he might have makeup on or like uh, work done. He looks like a Pixar squirrel. That looks handsome. He looks handsome in that one. That one is still hasn't figured out his hair is his head is shaped weird. This is a Google image watch along, guys. <laughs> Search Taj Mahal. Yeah, this is the come quad hours. That we will be exclusively looking at young and common or modern pictures of Taj. <laughs> the the hour. What do we? We fell back an hour. Is that what we did? So yeah, we now, haven't even started this episode. Yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, wearing a hat. You guys should see this picture. He's got a hat on. Well, different hat in this one, and with the sisters. The sisters are in there. Beautiful. What was was his uh, movie called Smart House? Remember that one? Were you a Disney Channel? Smart Guy, smart yeah. guy. was the show. Yeah, smart Guy was a show. Smart House was a movie. It's yeah. Smart Guy. Do, 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 do. I don't know that one. Yeah, well, it's appropriate that you don't. <laughs> 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 I was watching it with I Little Sister. That. Yeah. <laughs> Still loved it, though. Loved. It was good. Yeah. Even Stevens. Oh my God, dude. Kiss me goodnight. <laughs> Lewis Stevens in the fucking oh, penguin man. jockey costume <laughs> on the Halloween episode. <laughs> Are you really doing this right now? Put some put some pennies <laughs> on my eyes <laughs> and bury me in a Catholic cemetery. <laughs> Cause I'm in heaven. <laughs> Am I really doing what right now? Isn't the come quad, quad hour fun? <laughs> it is. It is. It does get yeah. fun. <laughs> it do be fun. <laughs> it takes us an hour and fifteen minutes, but yeah. one of us will make it fun at one point. Yeah, it peaks for a good two and a half minutes, <laughs> and then we chase that dragon for another fifteen minimum. Speaking <laughs> of chasing dragons, I would love to go get Chinese food if you guys ever want to go. Yeah, that is a number one idea, dude. <laughs> There's a number one garden idea. <laughs> oh my god! Did you ever? There was this place in um, L.A. T.G. Express. Okay. That was like our probably once a week delivery order. Ten what bucks. did they send you? I would just get fr- chicken fried rice. That's all I ever got. I don't have a very expansive palate. Everything is basically the same with a different sauce, but I'm scared of certain sauces. I've never had like. Duck sauce or that kind of stuff. Duck sauce is good. It's super, it's like super sweet. Sweet and sour. Yeah. I guess I've had sweet and sour chicken. More of a general so Yeah, same. I'll stick with that. Um, yeah, really I'll talk. So I'll just talk slow about this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we honestly sometimes would just call to hear the person that answered the phone. Nice voice. The funniest voice you could ever hear. You could tell, it. child. <laughs> I don't. I can't imitate. It's the him. kumquat hour. I know, but a lot <laughs> of people stick hour. around for it. Jeff, hand me that roll of tape so he can do the thing to make it appropriate. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Mike! No, Mike, that's the opposite. All right. Well, I what tried. were we? Uh, we were talking about something earlier. I'm going to stick with this. I will get back to this. Pork we're drivers. talking about endangered species. Did that ever come up? Yeah. Is that the restaurant where they have all the animals? <laughs> Dude, that wasn't we, what you weren't even trying on that one. <laughs> Is that the restaurant that has all the animals? <laughs> You're talking about Bugaboo Moose Creek Steakhouse? <laughs> Cause the moose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. Happy birthday to all three of us in heaven. <laughs> Uh, no, get me back to where I just was. TG Express. Rainforest Cafe. Oh, my God. TG Express, how can I get you? Oh, I like that. It was crazy. Couldn't tell if it was a child <laughs> that was just learning to speak. <laughs> 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 we were just yo, fucking eight dudes around no speakerphone <laughs> calling the number and cracking up and then hanging up. <laughs> and then we'd still, like, sometimes we would make, place the order. John, can we call right now? That's the kind of thing you want to do. What's it called again? TG Express. <laughs> it's near like Dodger Stadium. All right, let's see if we Look can get it up this. on maps. That's my preferred method, and I prefer yeah. he uses my method. 
Maps is good. I might have found it. Okay, this one has to be the Patreon only episode. For, for <laughs> Los Angeles, uh, Lincoln Heights. That makes sense. Yeah. TG Thai food. TG Express. Barranca Street. Is it by uh, Dodger Stadium? Bro. Bro, you front like you have a good map. Yeah, not too far. Look, here it is. Look. TG Thai food. Yeah. Listen, there's Dodger Stadium, and there it is right there. Lincoln Heights. That's the one. All right. Oh, you know I've never been there. All right, here we go. Didn't even know they had a real place. I thought it came from a All right, let's person's see. house. Right, let's see. Will they still be open? Oh, yeah. They're late. Oh, it says closed. GG's. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong number. Thank you. Not him. <laughs> that was the worst prank call ever. <laughs> it wasn't a prank call. We just wanted to hear a sweet oh, voice. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> TG's, dude, that's no good. If they they just go TG's now? Bitch, is this Friday's? I don't know who this is. <laughs> Lost it says closed on touch. Tuesdays. That's weird. Yeah. So may, maybe they're just in there prepping for tomorrow. Hmm. And that person who just answers the phone and takes the order isn't working today. Maybe we'll try again next time. Maybe we call back and say, look, here's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> I used to call and this weird little person used to answer. This is about uh, 12 years ago. Does that ring a bell? You got a weird little person in there anymore? Couldn't tell if the person was six years old, 60 years old, boy, girl, man, woman. Do you have that little person in there anymore? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm ready. <laughs> Jake, what's the funniest voice that you've ever heard? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, Mike. <laughs> this is worse than when Kramer had the talk show set. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Merv Griffin set. <laughs> uh, Jake, what's the funniest <laughs> voice you've ever thought of? <laughs> Listen. Do you, it's, oh, fuck. What is, um, God damn, what's that area in New York? Uh, Greenwich Village. There's this very cool record shop. What the fuck is the name of this place? It's an old-timey record shop, and it's triangular. Have you ever been there? No. I have to look it up because it's it's been there forever. Yeah. And it's a big deal in this neighborhood. Is it like where fucking Simon and Garfunkel used to play back Probably. in the day? Oh, okay. Tim and I were were walking through the neighborhood one day, and we just happened to walk in there because we had time to kill. And a disembodied voice, in the creepiest fucking voice that I've ever heard, was singing "Sweet Dreams." You never saw the person singing it. No, it was clearly a small person that you couldn't see over the records. I have no idea where it was coming. And it, dude, it was not a record. So yeah. it wasn't coming through speakers. It, it was, was a person in the store, and it's a very small store, and nobody besides the man behind the fucking counter was, was visible. <laughs> besides the man in the mirror, <laughs> the man behind the counter. I'm asking him if they have weird out. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he hits those notes. <laughs> He does. He's so he's so prepped for the record recording. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait, baby. Gonna... Yeah, that's so funny to picture like a little the lady from the Incredibles sized person. Yeah. Walking through the aisle singing. You can't see them. What does he sound like? What did the person sound yeah. like? Yeah. It sounded like a person who was shrunken singing sweet dreams by the arrhythmics. So like a chipmunk kind of voice? Like a crushed not, voice not box. chipmunk, but to the point where like you could tell this person was made fun of in grade school. Damn. Could it have been a midget? Would you be able to see a midget if it was in the store? And by it, I do mean it. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I apologize for that. <laughs> you can sense it in his bones. Yeah, we are not a midget positive podcast, man. <laughs> We are. We think they are hype bastards, and I refuse to call them by their desired name. Do not say we. Yeah. When you say hype bastards, I like my, I'm like, yeah, I like my little little fellas. I mean, W E E we. 
Thank you. The collective we. <laughs> 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 um, but but uh, honestly, would you have been able to discern a midget in that store if it was behind a section of uh, albums or CDs? But it could have looked like albums I, because I, of the scale. The voice definitely belonged to a person that was not a height that they should have been. Okay. It was not a child. It was a physically fucked up into it individual. She would have saw this person. Damn. I do too. We'll have to go back. That. It wasn't like you heard an angel. You're like, oh, something traumatic happened to this Tim person. Tim heard it too. <laughs> uh, Butterly yeah. can back me up on this. Yeah. But same creepy voice. That's a voice I never want to hear. That and a boss I had named Barb. <laughs> Absolute What did Barb sound like? A lady who's caught a lot of softballs. <laughs> Sounds like she just talked too much. Just an absolute nightmare human being. Man, I, I was in a uh, a local Kensington bar to watch the Dallas Eagles game the other day. And uh, there was a local microphone-throated fucking uh, Philly native really? at the bar. This lady was just so loud talking to the person next to her. Same voice as she would use at a fucking stadium. Um, and she was hosting karaoke night. <laughs> I got out of there before that started. <laughs> Believe you, me. Uh, but yeah, I loud and talking too much. Doesn't matter what your character is, man. I'm never going to get in there. Yeah, I'll never know the real you because I hate you already. That's the kind of voice this Why lady Why are you had. looking at me when you say that? <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant to have my eyes rolled back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you say something that hateful, can you please look at this head <laughs> to your right? The bounce head? Look, look in his eyes. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, Barb, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really hated her. Still do. I even mentioned how much I hate her in my last book. Nice. Yeah. Barb got a shout out, dude. She did. That fucking bitch is still on my brain. Was she um, a superior to you or just she a coworker? Was. Uh, yeah, she was my boss for I think like three years, and just an absolute fucking nightmare. Damn, game. three years dealing with a bitch. Yeah, that ain't no good. Might be the only boss that I've ever truly hated. I had a French boss that obviously uh, Los Angeles, right? Hated his frog guts. Yeah, still do. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you guys want to fuck on his a uh, shitty little website, what is it? Gaio dot com. How you spell that? <laughs> Wait till you hear this. G A Y O T. Gay overtime. <laughs> <laughs> it is just a clickbait ad that this guy, I think I've probably talked about this on here before. Let it rip, baby. The guy uh, was the son of a famous French travel writer, mm. almost like a, a French Fromers. Okay. Uh, but like, he would it's write the French guys for know, French so people. Hungry. French Romer sounds like it's drenched in gravy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some cheese curds. Amer- American cheese burned in. <laughs> Are you looking at what? Oh, uh, you're hungry about the, He's the gravy fries? <laughs> 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 oh, dude. Yeah, that place looks fucking way cooler than Chuck E. Cheese, by the way. Yeah. It does seem like a. More grown up version of Chuck E. Cheese. Is it more yeah. between Dave and Buzzards? Like a yeah. Dave and you Busted's. level up. Yeah. I don't know if it's there, but it might be like the Discovery Zone. It's, yeah, it's for like yeah. when you when when there's a boyfriend who's 25 and a girlfriend who's 17. <laughs> it's That's the kind of place. It, it strikes me as the kind of place that you take a child after you've accidentally broken his arm. <laughs> So yeah, we'll specific. see. We'll see if the, with, we'll see if uh, Mr. John the Bear can sign your cast. <laughs> <laughs> he signs. He's got fucking can barely hold a marker with his paw. Is that he signs a, the entire uh, fucking cast. E A R L Y just continues up the neck. <laughs> well, girl, sometimes accident is happening. <laughs> your stepdad loved you. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to learn to stay away when he has a few brewskis. Oh, somebody Larry just watched Toy guy. Story 3. <laughs> Larry the Cable Guy works there. <laughs> okay. I thought you were doing Prospector Bear from... Um, 
Oh, yeah. Oh, that was Prospector TS, Bear. TS3. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Huggy Bear or something? Oh, uh, yeah. A Slappy Bear. Lotso. <laughs> Lotso Bear. Lotso. Yeah. Lots of love. Lots of love <laughs> coming from that. I, I love man. Toy Story 3. Oh, yeah. Tear Jerker. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I got kicked out of the theater for jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to the incinerator, and I cried in the parking lot. You're jerking off, reaching to the people next to you like you're the trash compactor with them. I need to see these toys on fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's not why I said it. <laughs> and a giant a giant police net just landed on you like the claw. Got your ass out of there. John's got his ankles behind his head. They realize that one of his sneakers has Andy written on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're digging deep. <laughs> you know this motherfucker grew up like Sid, dude. <laughs> you know that. Yeah, this Sid grew up. Sid grew up. <laughs> <laughs> didn't kill anybody but is obsessed with anyone who ever did <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> you putting a you putting barbie legs on a fish hook mike <laughs> reach behind you oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah Going down smooth tonight. Uh huh. Smooth brain hour. (laughs) It's commenced. Damn, Jake. What are you most thankful for this holiday season? Oh, man. You guys. This has been great. It really has. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Not having a real job is mostly (laughs) what I'm thankful for. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Not having to deal with a barb. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God. That French prick. Oh, my God. I knew day one. I just cannot. I could never. Um, I was not meant to have a boss. I can't listen. I can't be told what to do. Mm. It's terrible. Yeah. Any any inkling of attitude. Mm. It's unnecessary. Well, I don't want to do a good job now. <laughs> it's the last thing I want to do. I was very fortunate. The last, the last school job I had, I, too, I had two of the best bosses anybody's ever had. There was actually one time where it was they had a tuition reimbursement program and the dumb fuck who was in charge of filing the reimbursement uh, forgot to submit mine. I brought it in one day and then I hadn't received anything for like a month and I checked back in. She's like, oh, I forgot to submit it. At this time, like I was making, I think like $29,000 a year. So it's like every fucking dollar counted. Yeah. My blood was boiling and like my boss found out about it. And, uh, he was super apologetic, and at the end of the day, he called me in his office and he gave me a check for a thousand dollars out of his own money. Whoa. And it's like when you when they finally pay you, just give it back to me then. Wow, dude, that is like it's so fucking nice, man. So unnecessary. The one percenter of nice yeah. bosses. That's yeah. insane. God yeah. damn. So that's a obvious. Get the paycheck. Quit the job. Never see that guy again. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck him over for a G. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, dude, that day for the free rack, you fucking <laughs> idiot! <laughs> Got his ass, dude. That day, um, it was like um, it was a beautiful day. It was like fucking like May, and uh, I, I was going to treat my family. I was like, Jamie, tell the kids we're going to the Phillies game tonight, and I can hear yay! I bought tickets. It turns out the tickets were for the following Monday. <laughs> oh my, oh no. my god But as luck would happen to the Phillies game tonight In one week <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be the longest night of your lives kids <laughs> But as luck would have it We went to an Anthony's coal fired pizza And The couple next to us Saw An old friend of theirs Who came by the table to say hello and it was clearly a guy that the lady used to bang. Oh, yeah. So it was a very strange dynamic between this fucking weirdo and the new husband. And the weirdo who stopped by the table kept extending the invite to join his party bus to go see Dave Matthews. <laughs> oh, my God. That guy was to trying to get guys. back in No, there. to them. Oh, okay. But we were right next to them. So naturally, you got on the bus? <laughs> <laughs> I would have, man. <laughs> That's insane. Um, when was that concert that night? No, it was like a week or so later. Nice. That guy, that guy had to be fucking pretty drunk 
to offer that invite <laughs> to <laughs> old flame and new husband. Uh, either that or an outrageous dickhead. Yeah. To yeah. not just say hello and keep it moving. Yeah, by the way, I can afford a party bus and a ticket to see Dave Matthews, so you kind of <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, not for nothing, but your bitch was tripping on this Billy. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Dick so big, she was tripping on a William. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking bars, dude. Damn. I don't think I've ever said <laughs> bars about anything, but that was the appropriate time <laughs> to say it. Was it? Yeah, it was. Oh my god! You second guessed me, and then you doubled down with a was. with a triple back. Oh yeah, <laughs> nickname single, Paddywhack. Single double triple back. Ooh, that sounds like something you get at Chapelbees. What? I call it Chapelbees because I couldn't. Know, I didn't know if I was going with Chili's or Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, this podcast is to go. Chapelbees. I can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna piss myself. That's the Applebee slogan. <laughs> Applebee's quarter margaritas. You're gonna piss yourself. <laughs> You're gonna piss my pants. <laughs> mm. What torture for those poor waiters there? I can't imagine yeah. that they've got to lead the restaurant industry in employee suicides. <laughs> Could you imagine, like? That's all hands on deck, like <laughs> New Year's Eve at a restaurant. Nobody can request Oof. off. Mm. Yeah. Oh, my God. And you know people are tipping 20 cents for a dollar. Yeah. Running out 15 drinks. Dude, yep. the way to do it would be, you know how they come out and sing the happy birthday song if it was just a six-person suicide? <laughs> <laughs> they came out clapping, then they all drew a gun. Yeah. Yeah, the last <laughs> night of Margarita Night, they <laughs> all... <laughs> <laughs> Do the claps to just muffle out the yeah. gunshots. <laughs> They're doing the fucking training day tap for the clap. Two guns each. <laughs> when they do it like, uh, what is it, wanted when they hold the guns out? like They all shoot each other. Yeah. A Romeo circle of death. Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> Everybody pull the trigger on the last happy birthday. <laughs> And many more. <laughs> one guy thinks you're going to go with that cha cha cha. The only one that lives. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Damn, so we've been through come quad hour. We've been through a lot of hours. <laughs> I think we have. Yeah. Well, boys, we had fun. We did. I never wanted to end either. Isn't it fun? It is, but. Yeah. I got to get this gobbler before midnight, you know? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, if you have to ask, you can't afford it, buddy. Yeah, what rest stop are you stopping at? <laughs> you know the one. You know what would be a fun trick to play on your wife? Is park out front and get like a uh, an animatronic turkey. Just <laughs> <laughs> your head. Get your head back in the car. <laughs> your wife looks like <laughs> you know a classic Thanksgiving prank. <laughs> and how much does this prank cost? Dude, you? it sounds like fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah, you got to buy it from Skyball. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even make My that anymore. My wife's gonna kill me when she finds out I took out a second mortgage <laughs> to buy this animatronic turkey that's gonna blow me one day. <laughs> She better laugh. She better get it. Think this is a good goof. When she walks in on me pulling up with the kids in the back, get ahead from this turkey. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's the one that Biden pardoned. <laughs> oh, man. You really want to drive a bitch wild, get the one that Obama pardoned. And that'll do it for us, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Come yeah. see me in freaking St. Louis, yeah. December 1st and 2nd. I'll be at Helium Comedy Club. Jake, Love you guys. Yeah, yeah. My bad, dog. Where are you going to be at? I'm going to be all over the place, Mark. I'm going to be over there. And then we'll be over here. Keep going. You can go on Instagram and follow me at Jake Matera, or you can go to Twitter, what they now refer to as X, also at Jake Matera. Please, Mike, where are you? Tell them about you. <laughs> He's still in the voice. I'm going to be getting hit in my car <laughs> from the nastiest turkey <laughs> that's ever been pardoned turkey in Washington, D.C. Hey, isn't that Jeff's license plate? <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, man. When I make a wish with that wishbone, I'm going to wish for more turkey head. But thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And, man, this is so much fun. Thank you, guys. Love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. There's so much fucked up shit to get into. Snickers.